Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Kevin. And in this week's video, we're gonna take a look at a topic from the Encore exam. Specifically, we're gonna be checking out the Embedded Event Manager, or the EEM feature. And as an example of what the Embedded Event Manager can do for us, it can watch a router for a specific event, and if that event occurs, that can trigger an action or a set of actions. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at the theory of EEM, as well as take a look at a demonstration. And as always, if you enjoy this video, please do me a favor, give me a like down below, and subscribe so you don't miss any of our weekly content. Now enjoy this Encore training on the Embedded Event Manager. Let's take a look at Cisco's Embedded Event Manager feature, or we say EEM for short. EEM, you can think of it sort of like an if-then statement. If this event occurs, then do this, or then perform this set of actions. And that if-then statement, if you want to think of it like that, makes up an EEM policy. And there are two main types of Embedded Event Manager policies. We have applets and scripts. Between the two applets is the simpler one to configure, Scripts, they're going to use a programming language called TCL, or Tickle Scripts. And that's a fairly simple programming language, but it's still something we would have to learn. And it's not specifically designed for EEM. So the good news is, on the Encore Exam Blueprint, Cisco tells us that we are only responsible for knowing how to use applets. And EEM is going to be using event detectors to determine when something noteworthy happens. As a few examples, an event detector could monitor SNMP messages, syslog messages, counters, timers, the status of an IP SLA configuration or NetFlow, and when an event is detected, an action or actions can be performed. And when I say we're going to perform an action or a set of actions, that's going to be determined by the applet or the scripts. And since applets are written in the CLI of your Cisco iOS device, the actions that you can take that's going to vary based on what version or flavor of Cisco iOS that you're running at the moment. And the structure in which all of this is contained is called an EEM policy, also known as an event subscriber. Specifically, an EEM policy defines what we're wanting to monitor, which event detector we're using for that monitoring, and what we do if a specific event is detected. Now let's take a high-level graphical view of all these different pieces and parts. At the top level, we have Embedded Event Manager, Applets, and Scripts. And we could use either one of those or both of those to create an EEM policy. Now remember that an Embedded Event Manager policy defines what is classified as an event and what action or actions we should take in response to that event. And this policy is contained within the Embedded Event Manager. Also connected to our EEM are event detectors. And here we see a few examples of event detectors, including syslog, timers, the command line interface. And in these examples, syslog is going to get its data from the syslog message queue. And the timer options, that's going to use hardware timers. The CLI detectors, they're going to get their information from the Cisco iOS parser. Now again, these are just a few examples of some possible event detectors that we could select from. But to demonstrate this, let's go out to an interface and configure the Embedded Event Manager. All right, let's configure the Embedded Event Manager. And I created a really simple topology. By the way, I'm doing this inside of Boson's NetSim product, their network simulator. And if you want to check it out, I've got a link in the description. It's an affiliate link, so I get a few bucks if you end up buying it. But it's really cool for labbing up your own topologies, not to mention they have a plethora of pre-built labs with tasks that you're challenged with and then complete walkthrough solutions. So it is a great way to get hands-on experience. Again, check out that link in the description. But what we're going to do in this basic demonstration is we're going to assume R1 is going to go to R2 to get to the internet. And we want to say if anybody goes in and administratively shuts down that link going over to R2, which by the way is interface gigabit 0 slash 0, if anybody shuts that down, we want to bring it right back up because they just killed our internet access. So the event we're looking for is a syslog message on screen saying this interface went down and the action we want to take is to bring that interface back up. Let's start this little simulation that I built. And here we are on R1. And when we started the simulation, you saw that the interface changed state to up. 
Well, it's going to change state to administratively down when we shut it down. But let's make sure we know exactly what it's going to do. Let's go into interface gigabit 0 slash 0, and let's do a shutdown. And we want to make a note of this. This is the syslog message that we're looking for. If that ever pops up in a syslog message, ding, 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 that's going to be a match, and we're going to take an action in response to that event. Now, let me bring this back up. I'll do a no shut to bring this back up. And now, let's configure EEM. Remembering that the Encore exam blueprint says we are only responsible for applets, not scripts. So we'll say event manager, let's do some context sensitive help, and we're going to specify an applet. Let's name it auto hyphen no hyphen shut. And we can monitor for different types of events. We want to monitor for a syslog event. Specifically, we want to monitor for a syslog pattern. And I'm going to put this in quotes. Interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 comma changed state to administratively down. Close quote. That's the event we're looking for. Now, what actions are we going to take in response to that event? And if we have multiple actions, we can number them so they're executed sequentially. I'm going to start off with action 1.0, and the action is going to be to issue a CLI command. I'll say action 1.0 is to issue a CLI command of, and I'll put this in quotes, enable, because I want to go into privilege mode. Then I'll say action 1.1, CLI command configure terminal, action 1.2, CLI command, let's go into interface, gigabit 0 slash 0. And finally, action 1.3 is the CLI command to do a no shutdown. So if it ever goes down administratively, notice we are looking for administratively shut down, not something that just happened to the wire and shut it down. But if it's administratively shut down, we're going to bring it right back up. And we are done. How about we test it now? To test it, let's go into interface gigabit 0 slash 0, and I'm going to do a shutdown. And when I do this, it should come up on screen and say interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 changed state to administratively down. And that's going to be the syslog event that we're waiting for. When EEM sees that, it's going to say, ding, 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 we've got a match. I need to execute these actions specified in this applet. Let's go into privilege mode. Let's go into global configuration mode, into interface gig 0 slash 0, and then we'll do a no shutdown. So let's see what happens. We press enter. Oh, look at that. Almost instantly, it goes down, and then it comes right back up again. The reason it came back up was because of our embedded event manager applet. And I hope you enjoyed this look at a topic from the Encore Exam Blueprint and Boson. They have an entire collection of Encore labs with specific tasks. So if you want to get some hands-on experience, check out my affiliate link down below. I highly recommend it to get your hands-on experience with your CCNA studies, your Encore studies, and your NARCI studies. Again, link down below. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.